Welcome everyone to this open day of the master degree program in uh, mechatronics and smart technology engineering of the University of Bergamo. Uh, thanks for coming. We are very pleased to be here with you. I'm Fiorenza Telegrenzi. I'm providing the communication for the Department of Engineering and Applied Sciences. And I'm here today with the Professor uh, Giuseppe Franchini, our course coordinator and the Professor Alessandro Colombo, our course uh, academic uh, advisor, who will uh, present to you in more detail the educational offer of this new master's degree program in mechatronics and smart technology engineering. Um, before getting into the, the art of the presentation, we would like to, to present you uh, to to start with a video that introduces you to the University of Bergamo and the amazing location, the amazing city in which it's located, especially for those of you who don't know our university and our city. Welcome again. So we have chosen to start uh, with uh, this video, which uh, tells us uh, the history, the, the university career of one uh, of our students from enrollment to graduation to give you an idea of what day-to-day uh, -day living uh, would be like at the University of Bergamo. I would like to follow these beautiful images uh, with some of more information about our city and our university and also about our department in which our master degree program in mechatronic and smart technology engineering 
is based. So, first of all, uh, an overview on the city of Bergamo. With a population of um, about uh, um, 120,000 inhabitants, Bergamo is a people-oriented city located in the center of Lombardy. The area is uh, an innovative uh, and uh, technological excellence. The industrial sector of Bergamo is among the European leaders uh, and uh, uh, specifically the spearhead is the manufacturing industry. Bergamo has also a strong tourist appeal uh, thanks uh, to the rich um, offer, uh, cultural offer and also the vast uh, cultural heritage. Uh, and also Bergamo is in a strategic position in Northern Italy and uh, Europe, also thanks to the Orioseo Airport that connects the area to the major European city. Some numbers uh, and facts about uh, the University of Bergamo right now. So we are a young university founded in uh, 1968 but recognized both nationally and internationally for our height level of education. Our university is strongly connected with, uh, the ter to the territory with dozens of collaboration with companies and local institutions. We have a free campus uh, all over the city and in the network, uh, free camp uh, eight department and uh, 46 degrees uh, courses uh, between undergraduate and graduate. The University of Bergamo is built around students. Uh, it's neither too large nor too small, so uh, it's um, a dynamic a reality that can uh, ensure um, the educational offer that is required um, for the student and by the territory. As a mid-sized university in a mid-sized city is small enough to give our students more individual attention and in the, mean, the meanwhile is um, big enough to ensure to, all, uh, to our students all the options that they can, they can seek. Uh, we have about uh, 23,000 students uh, uh, in the past uh, six years, uh, the number of students enrolled uh, uh, at the University of Bergamo has increased by over uh, 50%, indicated an important growth for our university, and uh, the same foreign students also grew by uh, 75%. Our university is also open to the world, uh, the commitment uh, of our uni university to create the best opportunities for our students uh, is, is uh, translated in an, uh, in an increased effort to build a relationship uh, with other university in Europe, but also uh, in Italy, in Europe, and all over the world. We can count on a dense network of connection with the European uh, within the European Union but also outside Europe with more than uh, 330 international agreements for study, research and internship. I think that now we can start to focus more on the department, which includes our master degree program in mechatronics and smart technology engineering. The department is the Department of Engineering and Applied Sciences that is part of the School of Engineering, together with the Department of Management, Information and Production Engineering. The Department of Engineering and Applied Science is characterized by a height multidisciplinarity. The scientific areas include the field of industrial engineering, building engineering, and the chemical and physical sciences. The campus, the engineering campus, is uh, the home of our department. It's uh, located in Dalmine, um, about um, 10 kilometers from Bergamo. We have also some innovation labs uh, in, uh, at uh, Kilometer Rosso, that is uh, the Innovation District and Research Center of Bergamo. 
in our campus, uh, you will find all the facilities uh, that can support you during uh, your um, academic uh, path. So you can find, for example, our innovation labs, libraries, study rooms, a canteen, the university residence, the sports university center, and is a campus in continuous growth. In fact, is um, in progress a, a project to expand the campus with a new building for um, that will host a new new rooms and new services. Our department is for sure also open to innovation. The research is, uh, ex is essential for our department. The main research areas are uh, energy and environment, design, protection, recovery, and environmental sustainability, microelectronics and mechatronics, and uh, physical and chemical sciences. We have uh, 33 research uh, labs with the most advanced technology available, and uh, um, they are also uh, used for teaching. In fact, uh, our labs are an integral part of our degree programs. Thanks also to the research, we are strongly connected with, um, the, with the territory and the, with the community in a culture of open innovation. Our department, in fact, is a key partner of uh, the uh, local industries for research and the technology transfer. And at the same time, uh, Manufacturing uh, Board is a key partner of the, def the department for the continuous uh, renewal of uh, its degree program. This allows us uh, to keep uh, our educational offer always updated with uh, technological evolution and uh, industry's needs. I'm at the end of my short uh, introduction. I hope uh, it's helped you to have more information about uh, the, the context in which our master degree program is based. I think that now is time to turn our attention to Professor uh, Giuseppe Franchini, specializing in uh, energy systems and turbo machinery, and also the um, coordinator of our course. Uh, he will introduce us to the new and innovative uh, master degree programs in mechatronics and smart technology engineering. So good afternoon, Professor Franchini, and the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, Fiorenza, hi and uh, welcome to this uh, presentation of the master degree program in mechatronics and smart technology engineering. Uh, I am the coordinator of uh, all courses in the mechanical engineering area, including this new and uh, innovative master's degree program offered by the University of Bergamo. The master's degree um, program in mechatronics and smart technology engineering aims uh, to provide students uh, professional knowledge uh, and skills uh, to lead mechanical engineering projects, uh, integrating uh, um, ICT, digital control systems, uh, electronics, uh, automation, and robotics. So, this course uh, has been designed in collaboration with uh, uh, some leading companies in our region. Uh, these companies uh, um, have asked us to train a new professional figure uh, with the knowledge in mechanical engineering, but also with uh, the uh, ability to know and apply digital technology. Uh, interaction with the industry is uh, one of the hallmarks of this uh, degree uh, program. Mm, in fact, um, just to mention an, an example of collaboration, the, the second period of uh, the second year is uh, entirely devoted to a multidisciplinary lab where students uh, are asked to develop a project work in collaboration with our industrial partners. Some lectures will be held by professionals from companies and the students, all students, will spend some weeks working at our partners' offices and plants. The master's degree program has two tracks, mechatronics, 
and smart technology engineering. The first one, the curriculum mechatronics, aims to uh, train engineers uh, to develop uh, projects uh, involving mechanically based systems uh, on which uh, digital and uh, information technologies uh, such as uh, electronics uh, and automation are uh, grafted. The curriculum smart technology engineering uh, is more focused on uh, the use of uh, digital technologies in a wider range of applications in uh, all the environments uh, in which uh, humans live, work and move around. So um, from the smart manufacturer, from the smart factory to the smart buildings uh, and to the smart cities. To summarize, uh, we could say that uh, the mechatronics curriculum is more vertical, while uh, the smart technology engineer, uh, engineering curriculum is more horizontal. Uh, the curriculum mechatronics is taught 50% uh, in English and 50% in Italian, while the curriculum smart technology engineering is entirely taught in English. So the international students uh, not speaking Italian can apply for uh, uh, the smart technology engineering track. More details uh, will be given by my colleague, Professor Alessandro Colombo, responsible for, uh, for recruitment and academic advisor. So uh, that's all for, uh, for now. Uh, I will remain connected for uh, the question time after the, the presentation. And uh, now enjoy the presentation of the master's degree program uh, in mechatronics and smart technology engineering by Professor Alessandro Colombo. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Giuseppe. Thank you, Fiorenza, for the nice introduction. I'm going to present you some details of our master's degree course. So we'll have 15 to 17 minutes in order to go a bit more in deep in, uh, in our proposal. And uh, so I want to give you an outline of this presentation before starting. We move towards the course objectives as a starting point. Then we'll show the program structure that has, in my opinion, the, the, the main novelty of our degrees in the laboratory for the second year. And then we we'll put some attention on the topics that will be covered during this two-year program. And finally, we'll spend a few words on the multidisciplinary laboratories that are already active and some example on the project that you will be able to develop during these few years. Finally, we'll give some idea of the professional roles that we will be able to cover and end up with some uh, hints and some, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, some information related to the recruitments and uh, to the mission and entry requirements. So, Let's start with the course objectives. Our goal is to certainly to guarantee to the students and to the graduated a solid methodological basis in mechanical engineers, but also to train high profile professional figures that are able to design complex system, complex mechanical system, also integrating new technologies that came out from the fields of electronics, controls, robotics. So the one that we call uh, information and communication technologies, for example to give also to, uh, to our student uh, professional skills to conduct and lead mechanical engineering projects that are integrating such technolo technologies, technologies and uh, also that are devoted to the, to the control of system. And when we speak about mechanical engineering, we are also speaking about uh, processes. So we are also thinking of the, uh, conducting uh, uh, an industrial process, uh, a factory and so on. Our graduates can design at the end of the, of the program advanced medical system, also applying the digital technologies in products and processes, as I mentioned. So, but how, what do you expect by a, a graduated in a mechatronic and smart technology engineering? So in these few slides, we want to, to point out what we expect that a student will be able to, to, uh, to, to do at the end of the program. First of all, we want that the students are able to design in a creative way and aware of the new digital technologies. So uh, it's pretty clear that uh, the, the uh, mechanical engineering is a continuous evolution. And in the last year, it's uh, 
uh, there is a, a let's say a strong connection with electronics control systems and also information technologies and we wonder how our students are able to and that's this kind of technologies on board of classical mechanical uh, uh, mechanicals uh, uh, process and products then we want our students are, uh, to be able also to design sustainable processes and products certainly from the point of view of other markets but also for the point of view of costs for the industry then our students our graduated students will be able to design and conduct engineering processes that are integrated in smart information and communication technology it's not uh, mechanical engineering is no more just a matter to design a robotic arm that is able to 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 uh, to resist to a given load but is it's a matter to design a robotic arm that is able to work in a production environment, integrated and self-monitored, probably possibly, that is able also to autonomously react to an expected changing in the production, for example. So things are becoming much, much more complex and integrated in the world part. So let's move to the program structure. The, the program is structured in two curricula or two tracks that enable students to orient their choice uh, on these two learning paths in uh, let's say in line with their own interests on one side we have the mechatronic path the mechatronic path is a bilingual path i mean the 50 percent of the courses are taught in italian while the 50 the remaining 50 percent are taught in english um, the goal of this path is to train in uh, our students in developing projects involving mechatronic products so mechanical based system on which information engineering technologies are grafted on the other side, we have the smart technology engineering path. This path is fully entirely taught in English. So for the uh, non-Italian speakers, is, is you, you can apply to this uh, curriculum. And the idea is to provide the mechanical engineers with additional skills related to information and communication technology that can be applied on different contexts, such as, for example, manufacturing plants, we speak about manufacturing, smart manufacturing, building and human activity, and we speak about smart living, but we will uh, go much more into the detail when we are going to present, when we present the laboratories that are part of the second year project. And how about the learning methods? Learning methods is the novelty of our course. In the first years, all the students are required to attend and uh, to develop uh, their uh, skills following the compulsory courses on mechanics, sustainable energy, electronics, and automation. On the second year, a wide choice of subjects can be chosen by the students in order to deepen and diversify their skills. And in the second semester, this is the novelty of the project, a multidisciplinary laboratory where small teams of students will carry out projects that are defined in collaboration with the industry will, will be developed in the second semester. And the, the team of students will be supervised by a multidisciplinary teams of professors. But what are the course topics? What we are going to study during these two years? On the one side, of course, you are going to, 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 to learn how to functional design mechatronic system, but you'll also have some competencies in, uh, in uh, devising in, into understanding the causes of mechanical vibration, for example, the effects on uh, people and structures. And uh, together with this kind of uh, uh, topics, you are going also to, 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 to learn about sustainable energy and thermal physics for advanced technology. When I speak about sustainable energy, it means that we'll be able to combine conventional and renewable energies and also to size down uh, hybrid uh, uh, plants that use both the technologies. And related to the thermal physics and for advanced technology, of course, thermodynamics is a key uh, subject in uh, such kind of applications. And uh, an advanced course will, will give you all the competencies that are needed in order also to think through industrial applications. Of course, our students will be able to virtual and physical prototype product and projects, and also to design complex machine and for example, machines that have uh, an eye uh, uh, an eye stress to mass ratio, or in any case, a tension uh, machine that can use them then in plants and other applications. You'll also earn all uh, a number of competencies in materials for advanced engineering, 
advanced in manufacturing technologies, and of course, in industrial plant design and simulation. And uh, last but not least, uh, smart sensor and electronic assistance will be part of the, of the subjects you, you'll, uh, 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 you'll attend during these two years, but also data science and automation that, as we say, are now, uh, uh, let's say, a key ingredient of the most of the process and products that uh, can I, come out from the mechanical engineering design. So let's spend a few words on the multidisciplinary laboratories. They are in the second year, second period, and we have a slide for each of the, of the three laboratories. We start with mechatronic system one. And uh, the goal is to train students in the development of multidisciplinary projects related to the mechatronic system where mechanics, electronics, control theory, and computer science synergically act together. Activities will cover the following subjects. So all the projects will, are, will be related to the such subject. Advanced mechatronic system, machine and structural design, industrial internet of things, mechanical system control, embedded system software design. Aside of the mechatronics labs, we have the smart living technologies lab. The coordinator is Professor Giuseppe Franchini, the coordinator of the course. And uh, the goal is to provide students with the ability to design and apply intelligent control technology and system to the environment and structure in which humans live, work, and move. Activity will cover the following subjects, structural monitoring, structural safety and risk, assessment, energy system design, smart grid, sensor, and a number of industrial partners already contributed to the, to the creation uh, of and uh, to, in proposing project for the students and they are listed on this slide. On the, on the right hand side of this slide, we have some example of digital twin of some structures that are, for example, a stadium. And uh, here we have also some title of the project that has been developed last year. And they are, as you, as you, as you can see, they are ranging from the monitoring of, uh, of the consumption, the energy consumption of a building up to the creation of digital twins of, uh, uh, of structures. The last lab I'm going to present is the Smart Manufacturing Processing Lab. Well, that the idea of this lab is to develop for the students the base knowledge for the design and management of model product plans. This is done by, by, by the application, by developing, as we said, of projects and by adopting an interdisciplinary approach that is based on the following subjects, advanced production system, smart manufacturing technologies, robots for industrial application, advanced production lines, and advanced material for the characterization techniques. Also in this case, we have already a number of partners that are contributing, actively contributing to the development of the project and proposing new industrial key problems that has to be solved by our students. Aside of the laboratories we just presented that are uh, strongly connected to the mechatronic and smart technology the, um, engineering uh, um, uh, program, we have also in our campus our research laboratories where our students, our researchers, professors uh, carry out their research and uh, they are a key ingredient of, of any energy, uh, engineering campus, of course, but uh, uh, keep in mind that also our students can, uh, let's say, often use these labs in order to carry out the, the, the courses. Uh, so you will be able in these two years to visit, actively visit and work uh, in our lab. So let's move towards the conclusion of this presentation. So now I'm going to try to, to figure it out the idea of the professional roles we are going to, to, uh, to develop in this uh, two year program. And then we spent uh, a few words on the uh, job expectation, and finally, on some information on the um, on the recruitment for this course. Professional roles: uh, the graduates in the mechatronic, and smart technology, and engineering are expected to cover technical and managerial roles in the mechanical sector, pervaded by information and communication technology. Of course, example are energy plants, industrial maintenance, transportation, and so on. Our graduates are able to design mechanical products equipped by embedded electronics and of course mechatronic system that is a key part of the course, but also 
to design, simulate production plans integrated with the Internet of Things technologies and in the, in the, let's say, in the, in the context of industry uh, 4.0. They are also able to design production systems that are able to self-regulate themselves in order to promptly react, for example, to unexpected changes in the production. And of course, our students will be able to monitor and control to design module control system applied that can be applied to a variety of contexts that range from homes to smart districts. So we speak about cities. And how about the, the job market? Because at the end of the day, our graduates need to work at the end of the few years program. And these are data that came out from the mechanical engineer master degree. So unfortunately, since this, uh, uh, the, the course in mechatronics, smart technology engineering is a brand new course, <coughs> sorry, uh, that are, not, are not, not yet available. But in any case, we have 100% employment rate within one year from the graduation that is, let's say, it's much more than the national average in the same class of, uh, of degree, that is roughly the 90% in Italy. And moreover, we have two months as an average time after graduation to full-time employment. That's, I, I think that are, let's say, really good results for our program. And in order to conclude, I want to spend a few words about admission, entry requirements, and then give you some contact point for us, for you. The, the requirements are a bachelor or equivalent from an accrediting institution and a B1 level in English. In any case, admission decisions are based on curriculum and a candidate <coughs> of the candidate and an interview. The access is normally granted to, in the case of mechatronics, applicants with at least 36 credits in, the, in basic course, math, physics, chemistry, and 48 in the fields of mechanical engineering. For the smart technology engineering tracks, applicants has to must have, um, have at least 36 credits in basic courses and 24 in the fields of mechanical engineering. In case uh, you are a non-European student, your bachelor degrees and your bachelor degrees have been obtained outside of, uh, of Italy, your educational qualification must be verified by University of Bergamo before the enrollment. And, uh, for non-European students that uh, lives abroad, you must apply through the Italian diplomatic offices in your country. Two calls for the preliminary online evaluation for non-European students are provided each year. And here I'm briefly recall uh, the period of the two calls. The first one is ongoing and will close on the 16th of, the February, of February, while the second one is in the first part of March from the 8th to the 18th and uh, will be an online admission interview and the ranking publication but all the information you need are available at this link and to conclude uh, these are our contacts giuseppe franchini professor franchini is the course coordinator of course then that's me alessandro colombo responsible for the equipment luigi coppola responsible for the recruiting on the interior department and then paolo gallardelli responsible for the study plans to conclude, I also uh, want to give you some links in order to, uh, to, to, to learn more about our uh, offers uh, and you have the chance to visit our, co our uh, website dedicated to the Mechatronia Smart Technology Engineering course and then also to follow us on the Facebook and Instagram pages where a lot of uh, uh, information also related to, uh, to, to uh, recruitment activities are published every day. So that's all on my side. Thank you, Professor Colombo. I would like to thank you also, Professor Franchini, for both for the clear presentation. Uh, they will be available to answer uh, all uh, your questions in a moment. Uh, but first, uh, we want to give uh, the opportunity to one of uh, our students uh, to tell us about uh, his experience. The student uh, name is Luca Teani. Unfortunately, he could not be here with us today, but uh, he had the pleasure of recording a short video for us. My name is Luca. I am from Bergamo and I'm a student at uh, the engineering campus of Dalmine, University of Bergamo. I have a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering earned at uh, this university and I continued my student career here. 
with the master's degree in uh, mechatronics and smart technology engineering. I've been among the first students to try this uh, new course uh, um, because I started it back in uh, September 2019 when uh, it was uh, first proposed. I chose this uh, master's degree because I was searching for an English degree in uh, mechanics focused on uh, new technologies and uh, also different from uh, other courses with the possibility of uh, an immediate uh, field experience with the largest company of uh, the territory. At the time, I was also working with an engineering uh, office and uh, uh, this also pitted my necessity to avoid moving to a new city, uh, continuing, uh, continuing to attend the university. In my first year, I attended uh, class lectures on uh, different topics like uh, data science and automation, uh, functional design, uh, virtual prototyping uh, and uh, uh, sustainable energies. All the courses were held in English, so uh, this forced me to practice it more, uh, allowing also to improve my language skills. Uh, the approach during the lectures was not the classic uh, listen and learn, but uh, uh, there were several interactive moments, such uh, laboratories, group homework, uh, and, uh, and also the final um, exam project, where you had to explain the job done to the professors. Um, one thing I appreciated was the discovering and learning of uh, new software programs to carry out uh, simulations, uh, design and also uh, data visualization. They, they come out uh, helpful in my job experience. Uh, then, in uh, the second year, more in-depth uh, topics were analyzed like uh, robotics, uh, production system, uh, uh, maintenance, uh, and, uh, and smart energy buildings in preparation for the um, big project with the companies. I did my project with the Smart Building Laboratory in collaboration with uh, Schneider Electric. The project consisted in a qualitative analysis of an HVAC system uh, installed in a toll booth uh, in the northern of Italy. Do, to, do, to do that, we used the, the concept of a digital twin that is a virtual uh, representation of a um, real system. To uh, collect the data, the company provided us uh, their uh, building management system, the so-called BMS, their technicians and also their engineers to help us during the, um, uh, the project. The goals were to compare the actual behavior of uh, the system with the uh, expected one, finding uh, faults, anomalies and uh, suggest a way to, to fix them. The second phase was uh, about uh, suggesting improvements on, uh, on the system, uh, both uh, hardware improvements, for example, uh, substituting a sensor, an old sensor with a new one, or uh, um, software improvements like uh, monitoring a new trend that uh, was not under control. And uh, the last thing was uh, an analysis on the benefits that uh, this monitoring has given or uh, will give once the suggested improvements are, uh, are done. The experience was uh, much formative because uh, we had a direct contact with the technicians and the engineers working on the project and uh, um, also with the professors and this helped us during uh, the work. This is a strong uh, key point uh, of the University of Bergamo because uh, being less students compared to other big uh, universities allow to have um, a more direct contact with uh, the professors and this benefits uh, reflects also on, uh, on their availability towards uh, the student. Um, my feedback of uh, this course is uh, for sure a positive one I did uh, this master's degree having also a part-time job and uh, from last October I um, started working as an operation engineer for a, a new multinational company that uh, called me and uh, then uh, soon after selected me even though I was uh, not graduated yet. Uh, right now, I'm uh, writing my master's degree thesis that is about uh, the uh, design and simulation of a solar energy system used uh, for air conditioning of an industrial warehouse. 
I chose this subject because it was uh, my favorite during my two years uh, experience uh, in the university and because my interests are focused uh, uh, on the application of uh, sustainable energy in improving the energy efficiency of uh, new and also existing buildings. Uh, I wish you uh, good luck for uh, your future choices and uh, that's all. Bye! I would uh, like to thank again uh, our student for his precious uh, contribution and wish him a good luck uh, for his thesis and uh, his future. So let's now open uh, uh, the question and answer section. I would invite uh, Professor Franchini and Professor Colombo to join. I remember to everyone that they can ask us your, their question through the chat. So let me see if there are some questions right now. Well, let's uh, wait some minutes uh, if other questions will come. In the meanwhile, uh, I can um, ask, uh, for example, um, to Professor Franchino, to Professor Colombo, who want to answer um, in the case uh, of, um, of the pandemic it will go on uh, will create uh, maybe other lockdowns is there the possibility to follow uh, uh, lessons and the course uh, also online or only or there's no this possibility so all in present Oh, uh, yes, uh, uh, obviously we hope that uh, the pandemic will be over <laughs> uh, in the next, uh, in the next months. Uh, in any case, um, uh, for sure, uh, as in the last two uh, years, uh, we, um, uh, we propose our lectures uh, in a dual mode. So in, uh, in the classroom for people uh, uh, that uh, would be uh, was uh, present in, uh, in in the campus and uh, simultaneously uh, remotely, uh, so by t by Teams platform and, and so on. So uh, also for future, this option uh, will be will be able uh, in the case uh, the, the pandemic uh, uh, would be present uh, in, uh, in in our region. So. Um, no problem about uh, about that. Thank you, Professor Franchini. Um, I have another student. That, uh, I have another question. Can I think can be useful for our students um, that can can ask if, uh, for example, all the students with a degree in uh, mechanical engineering can apply to our master or also students with other kind of, uh, of a bachelor degree? Okay, I can answer to this question, but I would say that in general, uh, any bachelor degree from industrial energy, it's okay for applying to, the, to, the our, to our programs. And in the case of the smart technology engineering track, uh, also bachelor that are related to the information and communication technology. So there are a number of, possible bachelor that can be let's say spent in order to, to get the access to the program. Thank you, Professor Colombo. I'm just checking the, the chat if there are other questions by our students. At the moment there are no questions. Maybe I can ask our professor if they want to add something to the presentation. Or um, I think uh, that we can wait. For sure, we we are uh, available to to answer uh, uh, to to your email uh, if you want to contact us uh, uh, also later on. Uh, so we are available to provide you uh, information about uh, the admission procedure and uh, about uh, the. Subjects of uh, the master degree, master degree program. 
uh, for sure. If you want to visit our campus, uh, if you are in Italy and uh, if you want to visit our campus, we are available to show you our laboratories, uh, our uh, um, uh, our uh, classrooms, uh, uh, just to have an idea of uh, the opportunities that uh, the uh, campus of engineering of the University of Bergamo can provide you for your future. Okay, perfect. Here we here we can see all of the contacts. So we, we can see the contact of the course coordinator, Professor Franchini, of Alessandro Colombo, um, our advisor, um, academic advisor. Um, Luigi Coppola is the, the, the responsible for the uh, recruitment of the in entire department. And then Paolo Gagliardelli that is re responsible for the study plans. Another useful information maybe about uh, the interview for, uh, for the admission. So all, uh, all students, uh, both uh, Italian and international students, uh, must be interviewed before the, the admission. And uh, uh, during the interview, we discuss about uh, the uh, previous uh, academic career, so the bachelors, uh, and uh, we discuss about uh, uh, their uh, expectation about uh, the master degree, the master degree program. So we will check uh, the, the requirements in terms of uh, credits uh, in, uh, in uh, the mechanical engineering uh, topics uh, in, uh, in the bachelor. And uh, so mm, it's an interview just to uh, provide also some uh, uh, suggestion related to uh, the preparation of uh, the, the study plan. Each student uh, can, uh, um, um, can uh, um, select uh, some uh, elective course in order to uh, be more speciali specialized uh, in, some, uh, in some topics. So uh, we can provide some advices during uh, the interview. So uh, we hope to see you uh, very, very soon. The first call is, uh, is open and uh, the second one is uh, uh, in the uh, following. Uh, so in next, uh, next weeks, we will interview all, uh, all the international applicants. Later on, uh, the applicant from, uh, from Italy and from uh, European countries. So hope to see you soon on site in Bergamo. Sure. Okay, I think uh, we, we have now come to the end of our meeting. If there are no other questions by our students, I want uh, to thank again uh, Professor Franchini and Professor Colombo for joining us today. I want to thank everyone here for attending uh, this uh, our open day and um, wish uh, good luck to everyone with your choices. Um, bye. See you soon, I hope. Hi, all. See you. Bye. See you. Bye bye.